Now before we finish our chapters on JavaScript, I did want to show you a couple more things that are practical tips for using JavaScript in your documents. And they're both things that will make your life a little bit easier when using JavaScript, especially if you're acquiring scripts from somewhere else and you're not going to write them yourself. To get things started, I'll just close up the file that we were working on before, and I'll go over to my working files and we'll open up the last try it file, number 5, try external JS files. Now, once again, I'm just going to open this up in the browser by dragging it in there, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up in my text edit program so we can start making changes to it. Now, as you can see, this file has a little calculator built into it, and the calculator is already working. I can enter a couple of different numbers. I'll enter 3 over here and 4 in there. We'll click the Calculate button, and we can see that the answer is 7. So let's go back over to our file and let's see how this JavaScript is put together. First of all, underneath the title, we've got a form. And it's a very simple form. It's got a name, calc, and it includes two input fields, one named N1 and one named N2. Then we've got a button that just says calculate for the label. And then we've got a little paragraph down here where we can see the answer. And of course, we've got a span tag with the ID of total, and that's the location where our answer is going to be placed. Down at the bottom, I can see a calculate function that's been put together also. So let's look through that step by step. Now so far, we've set up JavaScript to interact with our HTML pages by using get element by ID. And this calculator actually uses a slightly different way to access the values from form data. In the first line of our function, we create a variable called form data, and we set that equal to the whole form itself by using the forms function. You can see we call document forms, and then we specify the form that we're interested in, which is calc. And now our form data variable has the entire form stored in it so that we can access the elements. So then we can go down to our next line. Here we're creating another variable called n1, and as you can see, we're using our form data variable, which includes all the elements of the form, and we're telling it to retrieve one specific element by name. We're looking for the n1 element, and you can see that's the first input element we have here. Once we have that element, we're just asking for the value, and that extracts whatever is inside the text box. Now, as you can see, most of our other attributes, we're working with the ID value when working with JavaScript, but for forms, we're working with the name attribute elements. So just make sure you name your form elements appropriately. Now we do have another line after here that you probably haven't seen before because we haven't used it in this lesson. It's n1 equals number n1. Well, this is interesting because this is a text field, and when we extract values out of it, even though they're numeric, they are text. In order to do addition, we need to make sure that we're working on the number. Remember our earlier lesson about data types. So this statement here takes the n1 that we extracted from the text input element and turns it into a number so that we can do normal addition and subtraction on it. We do the same thing for the n2 element. We've got a variable created. We go back to our form data, which includes all the form elements, and we ask for the n2 element and then grab its value. The next line after that takes that n2 value and turns it from text into a number as well. Now you can see we're ready to do some addition. Then we create another variable called total and simply add n1 and n2 together. And then we've got a familiar statement at the bottom, document get element by id total. That drops us right into our span tag right here. And we just take the inner HTML, which is the text in between those tags, and drop our total into it. And that's exactly how our JavaScript works. So now that we have a working HTML file with some nice JavaScript in it, I'd like to take this example file and show you how to do two things with our JavaScript. The first one is taking a look at how we deal with errors. When you're testing your JavaScript in the browser, sometimes it's hard to find out if something's gone wrong. Now what I'll do with this JavaScript is I'd like to actually introduce an error into it. We already know it's working fine right now. So we'll just add a little error in the code, and we'll see how JavaScript can help us find that error in case we didn't know where it was. So the error I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up a variable that we didn't declare. Now remember, our variables are case sensitive, and we have to make sure we use the exact variable name. Well, what if I went down to the document down here and I tried to put in totals with an S? 
Now obviously, that's a different variable than the first total variable. Now let's just save that change into the page, and let's go out and refresh our browser page. Of course, we're expecting our script not to work. I'm going to put in two different numbers here. I'll put in 5 and let's say 6. I'll click Calculate. And of course, I'm not seeing an answer down here in the Answer Is block. Now, we expected that to happen because we broke the script. But if you had accidentally made a mistake, this is a very difficult thing to figure out because the browser is not really telling you much of anything. Well, actually, most browsers have a place where they can tell you what's going on with JavaScript. You just have to look for it a little bit. I'm using the Firefox browser, but if you're using Chrome or if you're using Safari, they all have tools in them that allow developers to go in and debug JavaScript. Now, Microsoft also has its own tools built into Explorer, but they don't work quite the same as these ones, so I'm focusing on non-Microsoft browsers for right now. For my browser, what I'm going to do is go over and use the Firebug function that I have installed here. And I'm just going to use it to open up the console at the bottom. Now, this is a really fabulous tool. I think I showed it in my last series. It's free, and you can download it straight from the Firefox plugins page. As I said before, Google Chrome, Safari, and Microsoft Explorer have similar features, so you can look for them as well if you're using a different browser. Now notice up here at the top, this has the capability of showing me the HTML on the page, and you see I can just open up the different panels and look through the HTML that we wrote on the page. I can take a look at the CSS, and I can also look at script and DOMs. But the part I'm looking for right now is this first tab called Console, so I'm going to click that. Now, this is an error console specifically for JavaScript that will tell you when things are going wrong. It doesn't show me anything right now because I need to refresh the page since I just opened the console. So I'm going to hit a refresh on my calculator page. I'll leave the 5 and 6 values in here, and I'm going to click Calculate again. Now, since we have the console open, it's sort of watching our JavaScript as we run it. So this time, when I click Calculate, I still don't see an answer up here at the top, but you can see that my console is actually telling me that I have an error. So this is where you're going to look to see what's going on. I'll take a look at the error message it's giving me. It says, totals is not defined. Well, that's correct. We tried to use a variable called totals, and we don't have one defined. We do, however, have a variable called total. Now, if we take a look at the rest of the error console, it actually shows me the line that's causing the problem. And it even tells me what line number it's on, so if I have a really difficult document, I could just count down from the top. Now, as you can see, this is a whole lot better than just staring at an empty screen and trying to figure out why your script didn't do what it was supposed to do. The console isn't always going to instantly tell you everything you did wrong, but at a very minimum, it'll give you a direction to look in the code, and it will call out a few specific lines of your code that you can study to make sure you don't have any errors. Now if I go back to my document and just fix that little error that we had, I'll get rid of the S, save my change, we'll go back and refresh the page and leave the console still open, and if I don't have any errors, I wouldn't expect to see anything down here. So if I go up and click the Calculate button, I see my answer is 11, everything seems to be working fine, and the console window actually verifies that for me by showing no errors in my script. Now let's take a look at the last thing I wanted to show you using external JavaScript files. Let's go back to our document. And I'm going to take a look at the script that we have down here at the bottom that just includes our one function calculate. A typical web page document might have several functions on it and several lines of code that have to be executed in order to get that document to work. But a lot of times you're looking at code that you could possibly use on another page. Now obviously, it would be easy to use this function on another page just by copying it out of this page and pasting it into the other one. But that can get a little tedious. And there are some functions that you might want to use quite often. So what we do to make JavaScript a little bit more accessible, and also to clean up our main HTML page, is we'll take some of the JavaScript, or all of it, and store it in an external JS file. So let's try that out with this page. I'm going to grab the entire script tag down here at the bottom, which includes our function, and I'm simply going to cut it from our document. Now if I save this change, and I go out and try to run the page, obviously it's not going to work. I'll refresh first, and I'll try our Calculate button, and you can see that this time it says Calculate the function is not defined. 
Well, that makes sense because we just removed it. Let's go back and put the calculate function back in. But instead of putting it inside this document, I'm going to go and create a new text file and I'm going to paste it into there. Now, as you can see, JavaScript just goes in a normal text file, just like HTML. But instead of giving it an HTML extension at the end, we're going to give it a .js extension at the end, short for JavaScript. Also, I do not need script tags inside the JavaScript file. Since this isn't HTML, we don't need to shield the function from that. So you can see we just have our raw JavaScript loaded in here. Now I'm going to save that new file that we made, and I'll go ahead and put it in the Chapter 3 folder with the rest of the items we're working on. And I'll just call this file calculate-functions.js. We'll put it in the Chapter 3 folder. And then what we need to do is we need to reference that file from within our document. Typically, we'll do this up inside the head of the document. What I'm going to add here is another script tag. So we'll go ahead and add in script. And we'll put in a closed script tag so we don't forget to close it. And what will be different about this script tag is we're not going to put JavaScript inside of it. But instead, I'll go to the beginning script tag, and I'm going to add a source attribute, src. And we'll set that equal to the path location of the JavaScript file that we're trying to use. In our case, I'll start off with quotes. The file is in the exact same folder, so all I need to do is call the name of the file. Calculate-functions.js. I'll close my quotes, and what that basically will do is it'll include whatever JavaScript is in this file in our document when the document loads. Now, let's just try it out first. I'm going to save those changes. I'm going to go back out to our browser, and I'll refresh the page again. And we'll just go back and use our same 5 and 6 values and click Calculate. And you can see that not only does my function work exactly like it did before, we also are not seeing any errors, which means everything's working fine. And that means that our document can go out and grab these functions and include them, even if they're not included in the code. Now that makes it really easy to use these functions again. All you have to do is add a script tag with a source attribute that attaches that JS file to whatever HTML file you want to use it in and those functions will be immediately available and you can just start calling them.